Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Nano LED, which is sold by IdeaSpark, but I bought this from Timu. So for all you Timu haters out there who say this, you know, it's just all crap crap, well, it means yeah, it's low price stuff, but IdeaSpark is the same uh, crap you can order off of Amazon, so same stuff, different place, who cares? Anyway. This is the board, the IdeaSpark uh, Nano LED, and we looked at that in my uh, video where I opened up all this stuff. There's an Atmega 328P and a uh, UH340 on the bottom of your USB interface, and on top we have this uh, 128 by 32 LED screen. So I'm sitting here trying to think. Yeah, you know, I want to, I want to check it out, make sure it works, but do a little demonstration. And uh, the first thing I do is get it working. And it did come with a program on here that said, you know, uh, welcome to Nano LED Idea Spark. So I thought, well, the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how to address this. You know, where does it live? Is it a spy device? Is is it an I squared C device? Or are they, are they bit banging it? That would have been the worst because I don't do assembly programming. I don't I don't shift bits. That makes absolutely no sense to me, but I'll move holes. Alright, so anyway. I'm trying to think if we have to find a way to talk to this thing and unbelievable, but right from the Timu listing is a, a link to this simple manual that tells you you need the U8G2 library. Tells you how to get it. Which one? And it's not just in English. Beginnen Sie mit Arduino. Yes, I believe that's a uh, Deutsch, a uh, German. An Asian language. I'm not going to embarrass myself and guess which one. French and Italian. So not only do you get a decent product, I mean it works, and uh, you get the documentation for it, which is a lot more than I can say from a lot of stuff I've ordered off of Amazon and AliExpress and Banggood. You just get a box. So I'm not saying this is all products, I'm just saying it's this one. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm buying these products and I'm checking them out so I can tell you about them. All right. So anyway, I was trying to figure out a way to uh, do a little demo to make sure the board works and show you guys. So I saw Julian Eilert, uh do this years ago where he solders your, oops, your current limiting resistors directly to the LED. Now, if somebody asked me in a, a question about a video last week, does it matter? Which leg you uh, put the resistor on? No. Even though the LED is polarized, the resistor is not. And all it does is resist the push of current. So it can resist the push of current on the way in or on the way out. It really doesn't matter. So I have two LEDs here as indicators, a green one and a red one. They each have 330 uh, ohm current limiting resistors. And then here we have this thing that appears like a capacitor, except it is not a capacitor. It is a, a switch, what I would call a trembler switch. There is a spring inside here on one of these legs, and it's attached in the center. And then radially around it, this can is the other side. And normally the spring hangs, you know, in the air in between them, but when it is um, disturbed, it makes contact and completes the circuit. And if you look here, you can see there on the left side, you have an S, and on the right side, you have a minus. So you have ground on the left, VCC in the middle, and uh, your signal coming out on the left side there. So uh, what I did when I first started this up is I took this green LED in that ground, I plugged it in there, and I plugged this into uh, five volts just so I could see 
does it go active high or active low while it's sitting there? So I know it's inactive. So whatever the LED was doing, the opposite would be the active. It's active high. All right, good. So I put that into digital pin number two. And then the two LEDs are in digital three and digital four. Green in digital three and the red is in digital four. And, you know, they jump the chasm there and go directly to ground. We have ground coming out of the Arduino here. We have five volts coming out here. I've carried the five volts from the bottom rail to the top rail. And that is, you know, the wiring of this. So I thought, you know, it would be funny and call this a low poly earthquake detector. So let me plug it in, show you what it does. Move the camera over here so you can get a better view. Right now it is uh, triggered. Right. Oh, and it's staying triggered. So that's okay. This thing is tunable by very carefully bending it between a vertical and horizontal position. You can kind of preload that spring. So, as you can see now, it says it's all good. But if an earthquake were to strike, it goes into earthquake mode. Now, it's uh, pretty safe, they're pretty non sensitive. So, to sensitize it, you can just bring it more horizontal. You see, now it's easier to set off and then you can find your sweet spot there works pretty cool so yeah that's it that's what i figured out and uh everything works but then i thought about this for a minute and i thought i get a lot of packages i mean a lot of packages and some come in really good condition some come in really bad condition why do you see shaking in the earthquake detector is not going off? That's the camera shaking. The camera is attached to something else. If I shake the table, of course, the earthquake detector will go off. Yeah, find that sweet spot. There we go. Anyway, back to the packages. So what I was thinking... It was some packages arrive in good shape, some packages arrive in bad shape. You could actually make a, like a drop detector out of this, for, well, for packages that you shipped. And you could find out if they've been dropped. So let me show you the code as it is now, and then how simple it would really be just to change that. All right, let's go over to the computer. Okay, let's start with the code. From the example so we know how to set this up everything that you see up here is just you know notifications and whatnot the first thing you need is your include line to tell it what library you need in this case it is the uh, uhg library now you have to select which of these constructors you need to set up yours i'm going to make it easy on you i'll just tell you if you scroll down until you find the SSD 1306, 128 by 32, the one here, okay, I went through here and I removed all of the ones that do not apply to this board, leaving us with the only one. So it is UG82 underscore SSD 1306 underscore 128 by 32 underscore Univision underscore F dot blah blah blah. Anyway, just find it like this 1306 128 by 32 I squared C, and it is the one here in the comment section that says Adafruit Feather. So just find that one and you'll be fine. Now, down here in our setup, we have the UG8.2, or UG82.begin, that starts the uh, compilation for that. And finally, down here in our loop, we say, clear the buffer, set the font, 
then we're going to draw a string at position 0, comma 10, and we're going to print hello world, and then we will send the buffer, which shows us what's in the buffer, and then we'll wait a second. So that's your entire setup for using this. Now you can put your program in around it. Let me show you how we did it with ours. Okay, here's the code. Pretty simple. We have two libraries, the Arduino library. I don't know if you really need that or not. And the UG82 library. You're definitely going to need that one. This is part of their setup. It's just checking, find out what is going on, whether we need uh, SPY or I squared C. Then we have our constructor that we just talked about, and then we have our setup here. So we're going to start with uh, UAG2 begin. Then we're going to do our pin mode. So we're going to say pin 2 is an input, the other two are outputs. And we'll set both of our outputs low. So now we have integer earthquake equals a digital read of pin 2, our input pin, that's the trembler. And we say if earthquake equals 1, so if it is active, then we'll clear the buffer, choose a font, and print earthquake. Oh no. Then we will uh, turn the green pin off and the red pin on and wait a second. Now, if it's not active, which means everything is okay, then we clear the buffer, pick a font, and write, it's all good. So how can we make this into a drop detector? Well, we just take out the uh, the reset part and just make it a one shot. Let me show you how to do that. What you can do is simply take all of this stuff from the loop. And this. And you can put it up here of the setup. So now it's going to do its setup. It's going to start up the screen, set our pins, set them both low, and then the, when it gets to this point, whatever happens, happens only once, and that's what's going to happen. So there's your low poly earthquake detector, or in this case, it can be a drop detector. You know, we could change this to uh, pins. Yeah, you put whatever you want. I'm just trying to think. I think it's pretty cool. Well, my friends, that's about all I've got for you today. I like this little nano board. It's pretty nice. Oh, no. Earthquake. <laughs> um, 850 is on the high side of what I would pay for this. I think it's better at $6, but... It is what it is, and it's convenient, and that's what I'm paying for is the convenience factor. So that is pretty cool. If you like this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll put links down below where you can get one of these if you're interested. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out. Peace.